So Seagate just released 30 terabyte hard drives. Those are Exos drives and Iron Wolf Pro drives. And you may wonder, do I really need 30 terabyte drive? So this video is going to be about reasons why you should not buy 30 terabyte drives. So I will go through seven different reasons why buying a 30 terabyte drive is a bad idea. So the first reason is speed and performance. The performance on bigger capacity drives is actually very similar to a smaller capacity alternatives. So in order to achieve 30 terabyte capacity, you may need four eight terabyte hard drives. On average, these big capacity drives work at speed around 250 megabytes a second. Whereas if you go for smaller capacities like eight terabyte drives, these babies work around 200 megabyte a second each. So if you set them up in a RAID, you're now suddenly reading from all of these drives at the same time. So potentially you can actually get 800 megabytes a second transfer speeds. Obviously the performance depends on the RAID you choose, but you will get much, much faster speeds if you are writing and reading from multiple drives at the same time. In this case, I wouldn't go lower than eight terabyte drives because these drives work around 200 megabytes a second, but slower capacity drives can be slightly slower. Also, there's another thing which is very important. It's called IOPS, how quickly data can be retrieved from the drives when you request it. And having all data scattered across multiple disks will allow you to access your data much, much quicker. So it's better for databases or websites or anything that requires very fast response rate. The second reason why it is better to go for lower capacity drives, but more of them, is redundancy. With bigger capacity drives, you're more likely going to choose a RAID 5 rather than RAID 6, because adding another 30 terabyte drive just to create a RAID 6 will cost you a lot. So, so many of you will go for RAID 5 option. But actually, if you go for more drives that are smaller capacity, you can go for safer options like RAID 6. This means two drives in your RAID can break down without losing any of your data. Otherwise, with RAID 5, you can only allow one drive to be broken. And the next and the most important thing is the noise and the power needed for these drives. Bigger drives will always create more noise because you need more platters, more heads inside. There are more and more mechanical parts inside this drive compared to any smaller capacity drive. And you can generate a lot of noise. So if you're planning to use this drive in your living room or in office, it is gonna give you a headache. Also regarding power, you will need more power to run these drives, more amps, more wattage. So that leads us to the next point, which is compatibility. Some one bay NASes have really weak PSUs built in, so they may not be powerful enough to actually power up a drive like this. So that's one thing about compatibility, simply the power issue. The other thing could be software based. Some older NASes with older firmware might not simply recognize capacities like 30 terabytes. Quite often some NAS brands make hard-coded limitations for the hard drives. And the other thing about compatibility, these bigger capacity drives sometimes come with a bigger size and sometimes they may not fit in those slots simply because they are too big. And talking about compatibility, there are brands like this that do not allow third-party drives at all. Then the next point is about the price. And to be more specific, price per terabyte. You'll often find that new released drives that are the biggest capacities are quite expensive if you calculate the price per terabyte. So quite often you will find it cheaper to go for smaller capacity drives, but more of them. We have a tool on NAS Compares where you can actually type in necessary storage space that you need and it will figure out which drives and which combinations are the cheapest to achieve this storage space. And another reason why not to choose 30 terabyte drive for your RAID is simply the RAID rebuild times. In order to rebuild 30 terabyte drive in your RAID, it might take days or sometimes even a week to rebuild that data. So if you have multiple 30 terabyte drives and one fails, you'll need to replace that drive. And if you have chosen RAID 5, which is one drive redundancy, and you need to wait one week for this new drive to be fully replaced, another drive can fail. It doesn't happen too often, but it happens. So you may think you have RAID 5, one drive protection, but if the second drive fails within that week, all your data is gone. 
so quicker rebuild times are very useful. Some brands work on their software to speed up the rebuild times, but some don't. And the last thing why you should not use 30 terabyte drive or any big capacity drive unnecessarily, it's simply because it's too fragile. So if you want to transport this drive somewhere in your NAS or in your pocket, if you drop it, this one drive costs you $1,000, but the money is not the biggest issue. You just lost 30 terabytes of your data. So these are the seven reasons why I would not go for biggest capacity drives myself. But obviously there are cases when you need to go for biggest capacity drive. So as the label states, it's Exos drives, Red Pro drives. These are enterprise type of drives. So people in their data centers, in their rack mount units. So bigger capacity drive you put in every bay, more storage space you get in less space. And they are saving on things like wattage, how much power you need to use to run these drives. And when you look at the wattage, how much watts do you need to run this much of storage space? It turns out to be cheaper in the long run because in data centers, they don't care about the noise or heat. But for those at home that are thinking about using this drive or not, I would use it if I needed a single drive for backups or archiving. But this is a great product if you want to back up all of your data from multiple disks onto one drive, which you can then put on the shelf. But this was a video where you should not buy the biggest capacity drives and why sometimes better to have multiple smaller capacity drives instead. If you agree or maybe disagree, do let me know in comments. Maybe I overlooked something, missed out on something. What would you choose? Bigger capacity drive or more smaller capacity drives? Thank you for watching and see you next time.